Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm Dong Yimong from Shanghai Tech University. Uh, uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, my uh, our recent research on adversarial machine learning, a magnet, a two-prong defense uh, against adversarial examples. Uh, this is a joint work with Professor Hao Chen from UC Davis. Uh, well, uh, as uh, David Wagner have uh, talked about in his keynote, uh, we are a defense paper against all the several uh, examples, and uh, yeah, I'll try to pursue it you in the uh, following half an hour that uh, magnet is uh, in fact a pretty good idea uh, about uh, all the example defense. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, okay, neural networks, uh, more commonly known as deep learning technologies nowadays, uh, has shown great performance in many complex tasks. Uh, this serves as a core competence in many real-life security, uh, 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 security critical applications like uh, user authentication and autonomous driving. Uh, to secure these applications is important for us to make sure that uh, these neural nets work just as we expected. Uh, however, past research has shown that this is not the case. Uh, uh, like these neural nets are vulnerable and they can be easily attacked. Okay, before we dive into the uh, vulnerabilities, I'd like to first add a few words on the neural nets we're talking about today. Uh, in this paper, we focus on uh, neural networks as classifiers. Uh, more specifically, a classifier takes an image as input and opposite the probability distribution over uh, what the input might be. Okay, uh, a classifier can be vulnerable in a number of ways. Uh, and in this paper, we focus on the evasion attack in which, uh, the, uh, uh, in which the adversary tried to fool the classifier by uh, crafting a special input at test time. And more specifically, we focus on adversarial examples. Uh, adversarial examples are inputs that are carefully crafted to uh, look like normal examples but cause only expected misclassification. Okay, and uh, in this example we show here, uh, this uh, picture of a panda uh, is, uh, class uh, is classified correctly by the classifier. Uh, however, if we add a very small uh, adversarial noise to the picture, uh, although the new picture looks exactly like the uh, original one, uh, it is misclassified by the classifier uh, with high confidence. Okay. Uh, past research has uh, involved uh, a lot of uh, attack generation methods. And to name a few, uh, fast gradient sign method, uh, they use the, uh, the gradient of the training loss uh, to perform the attack in a fast single step fashion. And uh, Carlinus attack, uh, which is proposed by Carlini and Wagner, uh, they use a different uh, uh, optimization objective to bypass defense. Uh, and also what's interesting about this attack is that they have this confidence uh, parameter to help them tune the generated adversarial examples to be more stealthy or to be more powerful. Okay, uh, we'll uh, talk more about this attack and this parameter later in our evaluation part. Uh, apart from this too, uh, we also tested iterative gradient sign method and deep pool method uh, in our uh, paper and all these attacks managed to fool the classifier uh, with high probability while keeping the distortion really low. Uh, all right, uh, meanwhile, at the other end of the room, uh, researchers has also come up with many uh, defenses against adversarial examples. Uh, to name a few, uh, adversarial training, uh, they use uh, adversarial examples generated from specific attacks to fine tune the network. Uh, defensive distillation try to uh, uh, try, try to train the classifier in a special way so that the uh, guidance information for attack generation gets blocked. Uh, and also, Mason and other researchers propose to, uh, to, to train a binary classifier for each attack uh, and to use this classifier to detect or several examples. Uh, okay, although these uh, defenses are pretty impressive, uh, they have some problems. Uh, first, uh, several training and detecting specific uh, methods detector, they need to model specific attack information into their defense to be effective. Uh, therefore, their methods are less likely to be generalizable to other unknown attacks. 
Uh, and also, uh, the uh, research training and defensive distillation, they need to retrain to modify the classifier. So uh, their approach might be, uh, 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 well, this retraining process can be a problem in many deployment circumstances. Okay, uh, so uh, with these problems in mind, we want to uh, propose new uh, defenses with the following properties. First, uh, we think that uh, the defense should not modify target classifier uh, so that they can be easily de uh, deployed as an add-on. And also, uh, we think that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, more importantly, uh, the defense should not rely on attack-specific properties so that they can be generalizable to unknown attacks. Uh, well, you know, as defender, uh, you never know what kind of attack uh, the attacker is going to use, so betting on a special attack method is really dangerous. Okay, to propose uh, to to uh, to really propose a new defense uh, and an effective one, uh, we need to first read about why auto-terror examples exist in the first place, and so uh, this brings us to the manifold hypothesis. Okay, uh, the manifold hypothesis mainly is, uh, says that. Uh, uh, the possible inputs, uh, basically what you're allowed to fit into the machine learning system, uh, take up a dense high dimensional sample space. Uh, however, the inputs we actually care about uh, concentrate mainly on this low dimensional metaphor. Uh, well, one basic assumption in machine learning is that all the data that we use to train and evaluate our models uh, are basically uh, generated following uh, the same data generation process, and all this data roughly fall on this manifold we just talked about. And in other words, uh, our models are just trying to work well with the data that's on the manifold, okay? Uh, all right, with this, uh, I now give our hypothesis for why other examples exist. Uh, first, uh, some auto server examples are far away from the manifold, so the classifiers are just not trying to um, work well with this input, so they simply fail. Uh, also, uh, there are other auto server examples that are close to the manifold binary, uh, but the classifier does not generalize well to these areas, so they also fail. Okay, uh, with regard to our hypothesis, uh, we have a simple reply uh, to the problem of auto examples, which can be summarized as a sanitizer impulse. Okay, uh, what do I mean? Uh, more specifically, uh, for these uh, examples that are really far away from the manifold, uh, there's no, no point for, uh, forcing our network to uh, make a decision on these examples. And therefore, we want to find out, to detect, and to uh, reject this uh, impulse. And we call this part of our framework a detector. I know that we can, uh, in fact, deploy multiple uh, detectors in uh, our defense. Also, uh, for the uh, other uh, other examples that are near the manifold, uh, we try to map them even closer to the manifold. So. Uh, that uh, we want to help the classifier make a better decision. Uh, we call this part of our framework uh, reformer. Okay, so to summarize the workflow for our uh, framework is for input X, we first, uh, we, uh, we first uh, use our detectors and ask, is X adversarial for any detector? Uh, if the answer is yes, we think that X is adversarial and we drop it. Uh, otherwise, we uh, reform this input X to get X prime, and finally we uh, classify this X prime with original classifier uh, and uh, return the uh, classification with that. All right, to actually implement our framework, we need something to help us capture this metaphor information. Uh, and in this uh, research, we use uh, autoencoders. Okay, autoencoders are uh, a special kind of neural nets that are trained to learn to copy as input to outputs uh, with certain constraints. And one uh, popular uh, optimization ob objective for training out encoder is to minimizing the reconstruction error, which is the L2 norm between uh, the input and output of the autoencoder. 
Uh, okay, past research has shown that uh, autoencoders are able to learn to map uh, inputs towards the manifold, and also they are able to uh, uh, approximate input manifold distance uh, with reconstruction error. So uh, we can just train autoencoders on normal examples only without the knowledge of any attack uh, to, to capture the manifold information. Uh, and no matter what, the, uh, what form the attack takes or how the classifier gets trained, uh, we can always use these autoencoders to uh, serve as a building block of our defensive framework. Okay, with these autoencoders, we now uh, build our detector and reformer uh, upon, upon them. Okay, uh, the basic form of detector is to uh, use reconstruction arrow directly as a measure. Uh, for an input X, we first reconstruct this X with autoencoder. Uh, and we measure the difference uh, between x and uh, x prime and ask if this difference is smaller than a predefined threshold. If the answer is yes, we think the input is normal and we continue processing. Uh, otherwise, we think it's adversarial and we just drop it. Okay, uh, however, this design is not too sensitive in some, uh, isn't sensitive enough in some cases. So we uh, demonstrate another design of our detector, which is a uh, detector that's based on prob uh, probability divergence. Uh, okay, for an input X, we first reconstru uh, reconstruct the X with autoencoder to get X prime. Uh, and we classify this X and X prime uh, with the original classifier to get uh, P and Q. And then we measure the uh, KL divergence between P and Q and ask uh, is this uh, divergence smaller than a predefined threshold? Uh, if the answer is yes, uh, we think it's normal. Otherwise, we think uh, it's adversarial. Okay, for reformer, uh, for input X, we uh, reconstruct as zero, and uh, we classify this X prime and get the probability uh, Q, and magnet returns this Q as final uh, classification result. Okay, uh, to evaluate MagNet, uh, I like to first introduce our strat model. Uh, and uh, know that the black box and white box defense is different from uh, what David Wagner talked about, uh, the black box and white box attack. Okay, uh, in our strat model, the black box defense, uh, first, uh, the, uh, in the black box model, uh, we assume that the attacker knows the parameters of the target classifier. Uh, which is the attacking target. Uh, however, the, uh, uh, the, the attacker is not aware of the, exi uh, the existence of our defense. And in white box defense, the uh, auto is, uh, uh knows everything about uh, the target classifier and also the defense so that uh, they can attack over uh, uh, this whole model uh, as a whole. Okay. Uh, well, we evaluated our, uh, we, we evaluated MacNet on two standard uh, datasets, uh, which is mini, uh, Amnist and uh, Safer 10. And on Amnist dataset, in black box scenario, uh, MacNet achieved a um, classification accuracy of more than 92% for all the attacks we consider uh, without any knowledge of what specific attack is being mounted. Uh, and also the uh, classification accuracy decrease on normal examples is very small, which is only 0.3%. Uh, and on Safer uh, 10 data set, uh, uh, Magnet achieved an accuracy of more than 76% for all the attack we considered, uh, and the uh, uh, accuracy decrease on normal classification, uh, on normal examples is also low, only 3.8%, uh, which is acceptable. Okay, uh, to further illustrate uh, how, uh, uh, well, how exactly Magnet works under the hood, uh, we, evaluate, uh, we evaluated Magnet against Carlinus attack uh, in, uh, with, uh, with a variety of confidence values. Okay, recall that uh, this is the uh, formulation of Carlinus attack and they have this confidence value. Uh, with, uh, low, uh, when, uh, with lower confidence, uh, the uh, uh, distortion of adversarial examples generated are smaller, and the attack is more sneaky, less noticeable. And on the other hand, if the, uh, with high confidence, uh, the adversarial examples have larger distortion, and they're more, not, uh, more, 
more likely to be transferable to other models, which means they're more powerful. Okay, uh, in the graph, uh, the change of uh, confidence is shown along the x-axis, and the y-axis shows the uh, classification accuracy of magnet. We can see that uh, if there's no defense at all, the classification accuracy is near zero everywhere, uh, and with, when both detector and reformer take effect, the classification accuracy is high uh, for all the confidence values we consider. Uh, however, what's interesting here is that if we break uh, the, the performance of magnet down to reformer and detector, uh, we see that uh, they actually complement each other to get better uh, general, uh, generalizing ability. And uh, for reformer, uh, it works better when the uh, uh, when the autocentric examples are really close to the normal examples, and for detector, it works better when the distortion is larger. Okay, uh, this is uh, well. Uh, this result coincides with the theory that magnet is based on, and also I like to note here that as this defense is not designed or trained uh, to work, uh, especially for a continuous tech this result is likely to be generalized by other unknown attacks. Uh, okay, uh, well, with all these results, we see that magnet works, for, uh, works pretty well for uh, black box and arrow. However, uh, magnet doesn't really work uh, for, for, for white box. Uh, so uh, instead of blaming magnet, we like to argue that the white box defense is not practical in the first place. Uh, first, to defeat, uh, well, to defeat a white box attacker, uh, the defender has to either uh, make it impossible for the attacker to find auto several examples, like to hide uh, the classifier or something, uh, or uh, they have to create a perfect classification network. Well, as neither of the two seems uh, practical in the near future, we like to propose a new uh, evaluation model, uh, which sits between the black box and white box model. Here comes the gray box model. Well, uh, in gray box model, as you know, the attacker knows the parameters of the classifier uh, as well. Uh, but for the defense, uh, if the, uh, the, uh, the defender can use a different strategy, uh, okay, the defender can train diverse defenses and randomly pick one for each session. Uh, and in this way, attacker only knows uh, possible defenses, but the exact defense is only known at one time. Uh, for example, uh, suppose we somehow manage to train four different defenses, A, B, C, and D, and for this input, we randomly, uh, we randomly pick one from the four, and we get C in this case, and then for another input, we pick again and get B in this, in uh, in this case. Okay, so how do we train diverse defenses? Okay, with magnet, this means training diverse autoencoders, in fact. So uh, in our paper, we propose a simple uh, method to do this. Uh, if we want to train f uh, in different uh, autoencoders, we train them at the same time uh, uh, by minimizing a loss function L over input X uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to achieve diversity. We try to force the output of each autoencoder uh, to be uh, as different as the uh, average reconstructed image as, uh, well, to, uh, we, we, we try to force the output of autoencoders to be different from average reconstructed image uh, as much as possible uh, to achieve diversity. And also, we want to still keep the reconstruction low to capture the manifold information. Okay, with, uh, with this method, uh, we can now evaluate magnets in the gray box model. Uh, to do this, uh, we uh, train eight different autoencoders, A through H, shown in this table, uh, and we use them as uh, reformer against collinear attack in C for 10 dataset. And from the table, we see that, okay, I'll first explain well, how this big ugly table works. Uh, well, for each column, uh, we generate attack on a specific, on the same autoencoder, which is D, and for each row, we, uh, we test these autocentric uh, examples against the same autoencoder, which is F. Uh, and the number of the cross is the classification accuracy against uh, autocentric examples. Uh, okay, we can see that 
uh, when uh, in, in the white box model, when the attack is directly generated on the uh, uh, on the defense in action, uh, we think that magnet doesn't really work. But uh, uh, luckily, this only happens with very low probability. In our case, uh, it's one eighth of the time. For the rest of the time, a uh, different defense can spec, uh, and magnet is effective. Uh, therefore, uh, in the end of the day, we find that if we randomly pick one uh, defense for each input, uh, we can get an expected uh, classification accuracy of more than 80%, uh, which is uh, pretty good. Okay, uh, before concluding my talk, uh, I'd like to uh, mention uh, the limitations of uh, magnet. Uh, we're aware that the, effective, uh, the effectiveness of magnet depends highly on the assumptions that uh, first, detector and reformer functions they exist, and also uh, we can appro uh, approximate them without encoders. Well, uh, we, well we, we don't have a definite answer about whether these uh, assumptions hold or not. Uh, however, we show empirically that these assumptions are likely to be correct, uh, and we hope our work can motivate uh, further research into other several examples uh, to help us understand them better. Okay, uh, finally, to conclude, uh, in this paper, we propose magnet framework, uh, which has a detector uh, that detects uh, examples far away from the manifold. And also, we have this reformer that moves examples closer to the manifold. Uh, we demonstrated uh, effective, uh, effective defense against other several examples in black box scenario with magnet. Uh, and finally, instead of uh, white box models, we advocate gray box model where security rests on model diversity. Uh, okay, so th that's all for my talk, and uh, thanks for coming. I'll be glad to take any question. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, uh, and well, let me show you. It's in fact a part of this one. Uh, okay, here. And uh, well, you see the uh, yellow one is uh, in fact uh, how the detector works. If uh, there's only uh, a detector working there, you know. Okay, thanks. Uh, sorry, but I didn't really get your question. I could have played through your feet. Uh, yeah, we don't add any restrictions. Yeah. Okay, I got it, I got it. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, okay, uh, let me first repeat your question. Uh, well, uh, the question is uh, if uh, there is an adversarial example with adversarial noise, uh, but however this uh, adversarial example falls on the manifold, uh, therefore the reformer doesn't work. Uh, is, uh, can I comment on this? Is, is that your question? Stay within. Uh, yes, stay within the uh, boundary like step. Okay, uh, well, uh, if, if, if this happens, I, I guess this is a pretty good uh, example, pretty normal example. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, if, if it's uh, a, re uh, well, if, uh, you know, for this normal examples in test set, uh, we cannot achieve like 100% uh, accuracy on them. So maybe they're just classified as uh, as a different. Uh, 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 maybe they're just uh, classified wrongly uh, because uh, you know it doesn't work. So the uh, in this case, uh, I don't think the reformer is going to work. But uh, uh, I, I don't really know whether this is possible or not. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Hi. <laughs> thanks. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what our reformer did. Yeah, some sort of. Oh, well, I, uh, I, I never said that uh, PC doesn't work or stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I got a question. Okay, well, uh, all encoders are able to uh, automatically uh, automatically retrieve these uh, features, and uh, I suppose this is maybe one reason why it works better. Uh, have, uh, and also, maybe we can bring this offline, yeah, and to leave some time for other people. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm a little confused as to if it's close enough to the manifold, why would it not be able to force the manifold and not just be misclassified based on the class rather than the class that it's not the class that it's in? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what if the reformer maps the other scenario examples to a different class? Uh, yeah, well, uh, well uh, in theory, we don't really have guarantee for this, uh, but uh, we, uh, we, uh, we hope that the classifier are able to deal with how uh, this uh, decision boundary look like uh, on the manifold. So this is really a problem about the classifier instead of about our uh, defense framework. Okay. 